Liberal Party leader Justin Trudeau spends all question period attacking the Conservatives over foreign influence and the security clearance. Then when an independent MP confronts Justin Trudeau on foreign interference, Justin Trudeau completely loses his cool, proving once again that he can dish it out, but he cannot take it. Welcome to the Canadian Shield. My name is Sterling. I'm your host. Before I start, I'll tell you one thing that I noticed, that Justin Trudeau spent the entire question period answering all of the questions and and never left the room even one time. I guess those 35 or so ministers that want him out, one of their complaints must have been that he never spends any time in question period and he dumps it all off on other ministers. I'm speculating, but this is the first time in over a year that he spent the entire question period answering questions and that he stayed in, in the building. Might have been that there were people there watching, or it might have been that he's being pushed out and he's trying to desperately cling because no matter what he says, no matter what he pretends to want, that man enjoys being the prime minister. Unfortunately for Justin Trudeau, because he spent the whole time in question period, the conservatives were able to talk to him and confront him and he only had two answers to every single solitary question. Everything that was said to him from the bloc became about the conservative leader. Everything that was said to him from the NDP became about the conservative leader. Everything that, of course, that was said to him from his own party became about the conservative leader. And everything that was said about uh, by the Conservatives became about the Conservative leader. There was no answer to any question that was asked. There was no uh, progress on anything. I mean, the Liberals are out there talking about how they want government to move forward, and yet all we heard all day today was security clearance and foreign interference and little digs and childish little behavior coming out of Justin Trudeau. Now, before I get into it, I just want to tell you a couple of things that are important to lay the groundwork on. in case you Just in case you don't understand or know some of the rules in the House of Commons. First of all, I want to establish one thing. There is a group, there are the members of parliament are the entire, everybody that has been elected. And then the people that are selected to do certain jobs, certain tasks, what we would refer to as ministers, they are part of what's called the cabinet. So there is the cabinet and then there's each party has a shadow minister. So if, if in the example of Sean Frazier, he's the housing minister, and communities, and so there's a shadow, a, a member who challenges everything on he says in, other, in every of the other parties. So here you can see the House of Commons de- defines the ministry or the cabinet. As of September 19, 2024, the cabinet is a key decision-making forum in the federal government responsible for it, its administration and establishment of its policy. So if you're in the cabinet and you're accused of foreign influence, you definitely have the ability to impact the day-to-day living of Canadians and the nation as a whole. So even if there's just a whisper or a hint, the fact that the federal government, the, the fact that the Liberal Party is leaving someone who has been accused as being one of the 11 uh, members that have been unduly influenced by foreign governments, well, I think it, there should be no shadow of a doubt for every single solitary ruling party member who has the ability to make decisions. The next thing I'd like to establish is that the House of Commons is done in rows. You hear the term as benches, back benches, front benches. And where you sit indicates your status in the party. And if you want to speak in the House of Commons, if you want to address the the Speaker of the House, the chair, you have to be sitting in your assigned seat. Prime Minister Trudeau can't go over where the housing minister sits and talk to the chair he can go over there and he can sit down but he can't address the chair nor can he go back three rows and say oh i just got a better view from over here and address the chair well if you're not in your seat you cannot address the chair and anyone who is part of the cabinet is in the front row so i I have a small image for you here you can see that there are the minister of uh Immigration is there. The Minister of Health is there. There's there's a whole, every single solitary person in this picture is a minister, including Mary Ng. Now, here's the uh, parliamentary um, bio on on Mary Ng, the Minister of Export Promotion, International Trade and Economic Development. So we have a softwood tariff issue with the United States of America. This individual is in charge of that. We have a carbon at the border. This individual is in charge of that. We have to put a tariff on uh, Chinese engines coming in and Chinese EV manufacturing coming into Canada. 
this minister is in charge of that. And we know from recent revelations that she has been influenced by the uh, Chinese government, a government that has 175 people, functioning diplomats inside of Canada. I, I really feel like the Liberal Party should be removing her simply on optics alone. They shouldn't be able to say, oh, we got to worry about foreign interference and we got to worry about all afternoon, we got to hear about, you know, security issues while all the while this woman is sitting in the front row with her thumb on the pulse of all trade that comes in and out of this country and with every country that we deal with, who it seems may be unduly influenced and not necessarily looking out for the best interests of Canadians. Now, that's what the issue was at, at stake when the Prime Minister and uh, sat down in question period today and decided that he was going to try and challenge Pierre Polyev on not having the security clearance. While he sits not 50 feet from a woman we absolutely know who has the RCMP has named as a person who has been influenced by a foreign government as one of the 11, as we'll call it. So now we have all of that and we have 90 minutes of question period or roughly, let's call it uh, 75 minutes of question period. And every single question that Trudeau was asked, except for a couple, he tried to make about the conservative not get conservative leader not getting this useless security clearance. And we'll get to the ridiculousness of that. However, before I do that, I want you to get it. I want you to appreciate that if the block asked them a question, he would talk about the cons the conservative security clearance. If the NDP asked him a question, he would talk about the cons So there is literally, I don't know, let's call it 50 times he said this today in the in, in this session. You know, let's just rough it out. Like every time he answered a question and you know, they, they go for about 60 seconds. So think about how many times he would have had to say this, right? It was really, well, let me show you exactly what I mean. I'll give you a, a montage here, just a small example. The fact that he has refused to get a security clearance be, to actually get the security clearance and therefore the briefings necessary for the leader of the opposition, a security clearance so that he can proceed because he refuses to get a security clearance. His security clearance was about national security. He refuses to get his security clearance because he refuses for inexplicable political, childish, who knows what reasons, refuses to get his security clearance, is get his security clearance by not getting the security clearance. We know uh, that foreign governments interfered. He refuses to take the security clearance. Leader of the Conservative Party refuses to get the necessary security briefings. <laughs> I think you get the picture. It was every question he was asked. So if, if MP Polyev asked him three times in his round, <laughs> then he said it. He said it a couple of times in French, which I, I didn't put in the into the montage. And he said it a whole bunch of times that I didn't put into the montage. I probably could have done 10 minutes on it, you know, like it feels like. Maybe not, but you get my point. That's all he said every, every question. So, But Pierre Polyev, to his credit, didn't even take the bait, right? And that's important. He just He just ignored it. And he would say housing, or he would say crime, or he would say food prices. And Trudeau wouldn't talk about any of those issues. He just came back to try and beat him up over the security clearance, which is why I think that it's all about the sound bites so that they can put it up on TikTok. Now, I don't have a TikTok, so I don't really know what they're doing over there. But I know that on X, they try this stuff all the time and they get, you know, ratioed into oblivion. I think the only place that they gain any traction at all is on, is on TikTok. Of course, that, that, you know, that begs the question, eh? What question? Well... Which country looks after TikTok? Anyway, nonetheless, what I would say is that that's all I heard every time. So it didn't matter what question was posed to him from whatever language. The uh, block was talking to him about the blocks issue of, of the um, old age security. And it was all about Polyev getting this security clearance. So, I mean, the NDP talked to him about uh, one lady stood up and asked him about women's reproductive rights. And it was all about Polyev not getting a security clearance. I mean, it was that pathetic. Now, Polyev didn't take the bait in any way, shape, or form. He just simply went about doing his job, and he, he tried. But one time, he did take one uh, two-question break 
to speak to uh, MP Trudeau's desperate and transparent attempt to make it this subject, to make the, the topic anything other than the horrible way the liberals have destroyed Canada and made us all live in the poorhouse. And here is the exchange. Mr. Speaker, if he wants to release the names, he legally can do it now. Here, 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 here. Willing to put at risk the agents, the officers, the sources that are putting their lives at risk to keep Canadians safe. There is a reason we do not disclose classified information. He won't release the names because he knows that he and his party are compromised. <laughs> So he spends all afternoon trying to get Pierre Polyev to feel they've been spent, they've been on it for like a week and a half now. They've been trying to get Pierre Polyev and they're trying to get the Canadian population who might not understand what's going on, right? There's nothing to it. There's no teeth in this, uh, but it does put a lot of handcuffs on you, right? So it doesn't empower you. It only, it only limits you, which is of course what Pierre Polyev said to him. He goes, if you want, release the names right now, if you're so hot to trot about these names. And then Trudeau stands up and says, oh, no, well, we can't do that because we have all of these things and we might be worried about you've had these names for over a year and you have done nothing. Nothing has changed because you're so hamstrung and, and handcuffed by the information. It's not like you're even removing Minister Ng, who's under suspicion of it. It's not like you've shut down trade agreements. It's not like you've done a single thing. You know these names and you say it's not, you're not worried about it and you're not worried about it. So if you're not worried about it, why should Pierre... Uh, Pierre Polyev worried about it. If you're not doing anything with it, if you can stand up in the House of Commons and say that it, if we can't talk about it, then what, what, what's in it for Pierre Polyev? What's in it for any Canadian? However, if I were to get my hands on that document that the RCMP has, whatever it is, let's call it a file, and we're able to get it to Pierre Polyev, he could stand up, he could release that and not break a single solitary law. And I don't care what you say as a Canadian, I want to know who's on that list. I want to know who is what I'll call a traitor in the House. Now, I think many of, of, of my viewers agree with me on that. So here we are. He, he gets all afternoon with this security clearance, security clearance, security clearance. And the independent M, uh, MP who is sitting as an independent because the, gov the federal government tossed him aside because of small suspicion that he might have been unduly influenced by Chinese, right? It's funny how they'll throw this guy aside. He, get, he had a turn. He gets a turn. The independents get a turn in, in the House of Commons. They don't normally get more than one shot and they have to do it at the end but they do get a turn. So here we are now after an hour and a half of Trudeau and the yelling and the laughing and, you know, because many times the conservatives just were floored by the ridiculousness of what Justin Trudeau would say, especially when it came to things like, oh, we're not allowed to say anything after all that. So here, I'll let you hear this guy and <laughs> this is the meat of it right here. The Honourable Member from Spadina, Fort York. Mr. Speaker, the Prime Minister wants to talk about national security. Let's do it. On New Year's Eve, Canadians will be ushering in the Hogue Commission's final report on foreign interference. But meanwhile, media continue to provide insight as to who are the infamous 11 parliamentarians in the pocket of China. Mr. Speaker, does the Prime Minister have trouble sitting at the Cabinet table when he must wittingly know that at least one of his ministers is not working in the service of Canada? <laughs> or is he entirely witless? All right, so all afternoon, right, security clearance. You would think that he'd have something polished and ready to say. He's literally five people away from the individual that, he's, that we're referring to. Honorable Prime Minister. Yeah, Mr. Speaker, that was an absolutely disgraceful what? display uh, of irreverence and unseriousness in a place that deserves what? a serious contemplation of issues of national security. But it doesn't surprise me. He's choosing to sit with the Conservative Party of Canada because they're Now I want you to look at MP Ng though. So I don't, <clears throat> I don't know why it went quiet, but you, the, you see, even when he's talking about his own party being uh, mem mentioned, he still tries to turn it on to the conservative leader. I mean, this is. Gaslighting 101. This is right out of the, the Freudian books. Like, this is ridiculous. This is absolutely transparent. He accuses Pierre Polyev of doing it all afternoon. And Pierre Polyev didn't get flustered even one time. And why? Because he knows it's not true. However, Justin Trudeau 
starts using words that are unparliamentary. That's disgusting is unparliamentary language, I'm pretty sure. We might have to hear later about this, uh, how he filed a complaint for that use of that word. You're not allowed to call honorable men disgusting or honorable people, whatever it may be. However, what I'd like you to do is take a close look at MP Ng as she screams across the floor and starts pointing her finger. My, my, my. Me thinks thou doth protect. How's it go? Methinks thou doth profess too loudly. Look at her go. This is supposed to be a member of parliament who's innocent of all allegations. And she is just snapping and snarling and going crazy. I think that that says enough. I think that there's no, there's proof is in the pudding, as they say, or like I tried to do a minute ago with the... Uh, you, pro- you protest too loudly, which is to say that, you know, if you've ever said to a guy, oh, do you have a crush on that girl? And he loses his mind because he actually, then later he asks her out, you know. So I think that what they believe in their minds, because they have very rudimentary and simplistic ways of thinking, the far left, they just think that if they lash out and freak out, then you and I will back down and tell ourselves, oh, it can't be true. They got so insulted by it. But the reality is different, right? They don't understand the that when you're on the other side, when you don't have anything to hide, when you're not worried about being um, guilty of anything, you don't care what the other individual says. You have absolutely no regard for what they say because you know it's nothing true. Except this guy who dishes it out all afternoon and then gets it once and snaps. Just loses his cool, loses his composure and becomes unparliamentary. Right honorable, they call him. And he starts freaking out. And then everybody got up behind him. Yay! So we know at least now that many of the Liberal Party is in on it. It seems to me that this kind of indicates that there might be something to the allegation that she's one of those members. And as a result of her having control of all of the trade deals that we make with countries like China or countries like Iran, it seems bizarre to me that we would allow her to maintain that portfolio with even the whisper of a hint of it. I mean, Justin Trudeau was on record saying that he admires the Chinese system, so maybe he's just trying to put up a smoke screen so that we don't find out his real motivations. I don't know. I can't speak to the inner workings of the mind of uh, Justin Trudeau. But I do know from sitting here what I saw there was a complete and utter overreaction to a man who was clearly dishing it out all afternoon and can't take it in the slightest. And if if nothing else were, were... if nothing else were brought to light by that action, ask yourself, is this the kind of individual that, or the kind of people who should be leading you? People who are, despite all the title, not honorable in their behavior. I know where my opinion lie on it. You can let me know what your opinion is down in the comments. I'm going to wrap here. I want to thank you for listening. I'll talk to you next time.